is a man, and his name is Matthew Walsh. Now, Matthew is an interesting fellow. He, he doesn't seem to know what a woman is. He continually asking everyone he meets about that. He also doesn't know if he's racist or not. And he con- he's been asking a lot of people about that recently. You know, he's, he's on this journey of self-discovery, obviously. Um, but one of the weird parts about Matt Walsh is that he seems to have this ongoing beef with the creator of VeggieTales. Now, if you don't know what VeggieTales is, it's essentially a cheap animated series uh, using 3D animation uh, that retells Bible stories and, and like Christian values with talking anthropomorphic uh, fruits and vegetables. That that's that that's it basically in a, a nutshell, okay? Like the 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 little fruits and vegetables, they go on little adventures. Um yes, veggie tales. Uh Matt Walsh is beefing with veggie tales. It, yeah, it's the, it's a conservative Christian cartoon filled with vegetables. Um have we got a show for you, as they say. So let's no 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 is the is Veggie Tales too wholesome for him? No, actually, believe it or not, the creator of Veggie Tales watched Matt Walsh's film and didn't like it, and now Matt Walsh is upset about it. We discuss the deep concern expressed by some Christian commentators about my new film. Am I racist? These pundits are troubled by the film because they say we use deceptive tactics to capture the footage, uh, and that is profoundly problematic, they say. They are disturbed. Um, A Christian has made a movie that's interesting and funny and effective and that appeals to a wide audience, and this is... I I don't think any of those things are true about his movie. (laughs) You know, usually if... uh... Usually, if your movie is all of those things, you don't have to repeatedly say it. Of course, a cause for great alarm among the sorts of Christians who want to make sure that we never do anything interesting, funny, or effective, especially if it appeals to a wide audience. No, what they want always are things that are lame and boring and redundant and, most of all, insular. And I've already addressed the arguments these people have made. I don't need to address it again, and yet... Here we are, because I happened to see a clip posted at Twitter by the account Woke Preacher Clips. This is a conversation on a podcast called Holy Post, hosted by Phil Vischer, best known as one of the creators of uh, Veggie Tales. Vischer has gone woke in recent years, or maybe always was, I don't know, but it's no great surprise either way that he's uh, apparently not a fan of mine. And he's joined on this episode by a guy named... Yeah, Woke Preacher Clips, G, because they need, everything needs to be called out for being woke now by conservatives. You know, the ultimate snowflakes. Pastor Mike Erie and another guy named Sky Jathani, who is uh, now a Christian speaker, I guess, and was once also a pastor. So these three brilliant minds came together to talk about the film, a film that, as far as I can tell, none of them have seen. By the way, just as an FYI, this is a perfect example of how even if you got like the white ethno state that Matt Walsh craves, uh, you know, it, we, we know that, Matt. We, we've seen your old videos talking about your uh, adoration for the Anglo-Saxon race. We, we, we know what cloth you're cut from here, what kind of hood it's fashioned into. But uh, additionally, like, I lost my train of thought there. Can you say any of that stuff about VeggieTales? I thought it was kind of universally loved. Can you say any of that stuff about VeggieTales? I thought it was kind of universally loved. No, it it is not universally loved. It's well-liked in Christian circles, for sure. Uh, But, like, not universally loved, no. Um, Matt Walsh is Norman, not Anglo-Saxon. I don't think he cares about that distinction. Do, do, you, do you think facts actually matter to a fascist? No. Um, but also, like, 
this is a perfect example of how even if he got the ideal society he thinks would be most harmonious, you know, very homogenous, very white, Christian, etc., that it would still rip itself apart. You know, like there's still we're seeing here a desire to within people who are ostensibly on the same theme. He's he wants to attack this guy for not liking his movie. And, and that's it. You know, like, oh, you didn't like my movie. You're you're just evil and woke. Uh, let's listen. The Superman. film lampoons diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives and features Walsh posing as a DEI expert to expose and ridicule actual DEI experts in a Borat-style subterfuge. And if mm. there's anything we need more in the... Do... Like, do you think he feels any shame whatsoever by comparing his movie to Borat? Do you think Matt Walsh feels any shame like that whatsoever? I hope so. Tubian, thank you for the $2 super chat. The Christian world. It's Borat subterfuge. style subterfuge. Now, I'm going to let them continue, but I do want to interject here to say that, uh, yeah, actually, Phil, we do need more of that in the Christian world. Comedy, satire, using the left's own methods against them. <laughs> Dude, he's so mad. This is like the maddest I've seen Matt Walsh. Dude. Uh, yeah, we do need more uh, comedy, comedic stylings of Sasha Baron Cohen, but for, for, for conservatives. We do need that, actually. That is, without question, something we need more of. But these three men disagree, so let's, let's get to their argument. Even though they didn't see the movie and haven't the slightest damn clue what they're even talking about, still, uh, let's continue. We don't know who's right, but it sparked a conversation online among Christians saying, is that okay? And Denny Burke wrote a piece, actually I was reading from Denny Burke's piece, who's the, the head of uh, the Center for Biblical Womanhood and Manhood, so <laughs> ultra conservative, but he pushed- Oh man, there, there's, a, there's a Center for Biblical Womanhood and Manhood? <laughs> That seems like a miserable place to work. Back and said, I think it's wrong to use subterfuge and deception just, you know, for culture war battles. And other people said, oh, what, do you think it's wrong to lie to the Nazis that you've got Jews in your attic? This I is, knew that was coming. <laughs> these are <laughs> totally, serious totally. times. It warrants serious measure. So you, you mm -hmm. both are one current and one former pastor. I want you to tell me, when is it okay for me to lie to achieve what I consider to be a good? Mike Erie, go. Well, I'm lying that I'm enjoying this. <laughs> um. <laughs> I want to interject one more time. Uh, also, I, can, I, can I say like, this is not, th this is actually like, that, that's an interesting question, right? That's an interesting question for to to kind of like elaborate on their various worldviews. I think that's interesting, right? But something tells me that Matt Walsh is is just upset about not being like fellated by these guys, you know? Briefly before we hear them make their compelling case against the movie they didn't watch. I just want you to notice uh, the tone. You see the guy on the bottom left. I think that's Sky with his head in his hands, rolling his eyes. Pastor Erie is flippant and dismissive. So you, you see how mad he is? Do, do, you, do you, got, you see it, right? Like, like you, you, you guys saw like that very pleasant exchange between like three guys uh, and Matt Walsh is just seething about it. It's crazy. I love it. It was Phil Vischer, the vegetarian. He, he's so not mad right now. Phil's guy. The whole thing is so beneath them. It's just so silly. It's absurd that they're even lowering themselves to discuss my film. <laughs> That's the general tone which pervades all the rest of what we're about to hear and what came before 
uh, the clip we just played. He's actually personally offended by this. It's so sad. He's so upset that the creator of VeggieTales despises him. It's also the attitude that these types of people usually have when discussing me or my work. But notice something. They're discussing my work. I'm now discussing them discussing my work, but I'm not discussing any of their work. <laughs> I'm being the bigger man here by not talking about veggie tales. Nobody is. Nobody's discussing it. And that's because they haven't done anything <laughs> remotely worth discussing in their entire... <laughs> <laughs> oh god higher lives they haven't done anything at all now by, by the way he's talking about two pastors and one of the co-creators of veggie tales again if you're if you're in christian circles veggie tales is pretty ubiquitous it's one of the most influential pieces of like christian media that exists and uh, it, it, it was so ubiquitous and so successful in Christian niches that I'm pretty sure, I don't know, how many mainstream movies did they release? Uh, let's see. Can I, okay. That's so many movies, dog. Yeah, so there are two mainstream movies. Jonah, a VeggieTales movie, an adaptation of the story of Jonah and the whale. And then The Pirates Who Don't Do Anything, a VeggieTales movie, which uh, I don't think was related to anything like overtly Christian. It was like their attempt to go more mainstream. Uh, but I do want to say... Uh, how many VeggieTales movies are there? Just out of curiosity here. There are 43 VeggieTales movies. And I'm not kidding. Like... Th this is all, all of the VeggieTales movies. Matt Walsh, how many movies have you made? Have you made 43 movies? Have you, have, you been, have you been making movies since the early 90s? Like, god damn, dude. They made a VeggieTales adaptation of The Grapes of Wrath. What are you doing? They've... Also, the number one rated VeggieTales uh, short film is uh, VeggieTales Tales from the Crisper, which, you know, that's a great, that's an amusing take on Tales from the Crypt. But uh, anyway, let's go. Vischer made VeggieTales 30 years ago, which is fine. That was a successful series about singing vegetables. It, you know, and, and whatever. It, it, it's something, though, at least. These other two, and, and Vischer himself... Uh, Matt Walsh, those other two have been busy saving souls. What have you done? How, how many souls have you personally saved, Matt Walsh? Huh? 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 That's right. You're only doing things uh, on the timeline of mortal flesh. You're only entertaining people's flesh prisons. But you aren't nurturing their souls, Matt Walsh. Self post VeggieTales. Haven't done anything. Ever. To move or impact the culture in any way. They hang out in their pretentious, woke, pseudo-Christian bubble, smelling their own farts and telling themselves how much smarter and more nuanced and more sophisticated they are. But they don't do anything. Also, they Veggie Tales is still going. Like, Veggie Tales has been making content since 1993 and continues to this day. Like... I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> like, it's so weird for him to be taking, like, this this high ground. It is? Yeah, it was brought back as, like, a television series uh, during uh, COVID, I think. Uh, 
They don't create anything. Instead, they spend their time dismissing. Dude, dude, you play with money from fracking billionaires. That That's your job. Your job is you get handed money to regurgitate the points of fracking billionaires. That, that, that's it. Specifically critiquing the only people who are actually doing and creating things. And look, I'm used to having useless people criticize me. It happens every day. But wait, wait, wait. Sorry. But they don't do anything. Oh, hey, he's got his sweet baby gang mug again. I guess he didn't get rid of all of the merchandise uh, of him as a baby, which, in case you guys didn't remember, um... Let's see. Yeah, here here's a here's a little 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 thing here. Yeah, that's right. The sweet baby plushie. Uh a plushie that Daily Wire and Matt Walsh okayed to sell uh, for $25, which was a baby with Matt Walsh's face. Uh, Hundreds of submissions. Why Five. is this Christian beefing with a Christian vegetable cartoon? Like what the asterisk, 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 asterisk is this? I, I couldn't tell you, Olympians. Finalists. Three judges. One winner. This is the Daily Wire search for the official Sweet Baby Gang anthem. Yeah. It has its own theme song. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the search for the Sweet Baby Gang anthem. I am your host, Michael Knowles. I am joined by my fellow Daily Wire hosts, Ben Shapiro, <laughs> Andrew Clay. I like that Ben Shapiro isn't on camera with these three. <laughs> and the man of the hour, Matt Wolf. Now the winner of this contest is in for a real treat. He will get all of our most recent books, he will also become a part of the Matt Walsh Show legacy. He will be featured in his very song at the introduction to the reading the comments section this of Matt's show. This guy's gotta be the now, worst Matt, blunt rotation of I all. I am told Bro. that the Sweet Baby Gang has a special name for you. They do. They do. Sweet Daddy Walsh is what Sweet they call it. That's my official name. Daddy yeah. Walsh. Yeah, this guy's really contributing to society here. Do I expect to be addressed likewise by all of you. Yes, daddy. Thank you. Dr I think I threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> I rebuke this. Wait, you know, what, what, did, what did Jesus use to curse that fig tree? We need that. We need that for this entire, this entire situation. True. Never mind. Actually, what? don't call me that. Are you sure? Papa? Daddy? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Andrew Clavin. Oh, what do you want? <laughs> the leader of Clavenon, yeah. the These master of the multiverse. The closeted gay allegations. <laughs> Where were you? When <laughs> These guys are definitely not beating the closeted gay allegations. <laughs> when you first heard of the Sweet Baby Gang, I was sitting here during the introduction. Mm. And I want to say that this is, I, this may be the most humiliating moment of my life. I, I looked at that picture of the baby Walsh and I, I now have a tick. I have a small twitch mm -hmm. from the trauma. You know, you should have, you, you, that was your, th those twitches were your body trying to save you from this, Andrew. You, you, you didn't have to subject yourself to this. Oh, wait, yes, you did, because you guys all take billionaire fracking money to do exactly this. And if these lights flashing around give me a seizure, I am suing Ben Shapiro back into the Stone Age. I want you to know that. 
So I'm thrilled to be here. Well, speaking of Ben Shapiro, Ben, uh, it's, it's great, obviously, to have you as a judge here. Does it feel weird that you are going to have to judge on behalf of your daddy? I want, I want off the ride. If all of them came out in the next morning, who would be the top? I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that at all. Oh, God. This hurt. This hurts. Okay, earlier today, I, I, I floated the idea that we rename conservative comedy as pseudo-comedy. Because, like... Much like a pseudo-intellectual, pseudo-comedians really want to be funny, but they don't understand any of the components of actually getting that laugh, you know? This is, this is the embodiment of pseudo-comedy. When do I get to fire everyone? <laughs> when? Well, you'll get to make at least some firing decisions when you hear all of the songs. Some of them are gonna go. I lost some subscribers there. I, I, I can tell. I, I lost some of you there. But uh, really uh, what I wanted to bring up here was where does the sweet baby gang come from? You know, what, where did this, uh, the, the paragon of content creation, the great contributor to society, Matt Walsh, where did he get this idea for calling people the sweet baby gang? You've heard me say it, folks. You've heard me explain. But, you know, I think a lot of people might not believe it until they see it. So here is really the origin of the sweet baby gang mythology. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh we're uh, just going to mute that cuz Yeah, so these are two adult men in 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 diapers. Okay. Mhm. Mm yep. Tater. You yeah. got a chance to go see Kicks. Yeah. If you can be now, I do want to say, pay attention to uh, this guy's tattoos. He has a couple very interesting ones. The intern. How? Uh, what's the comfort level of the diaper? Oh, look at that! It's Matt. It's Matt Walsh over here. A ten and a half. This is nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. <laughs> so you guys are actually <laughs> enjoying this, intern. <laughs> You have some, uh, that, uh, look at those, look at those, look at those pale legs. Some pale legs on old Tater here. I don't, I don't do shorts. Let me shorts. tell you something, man. You are built like a rock, though. I don't do shorts. Yeah, you are built like, uh... <laughs> oh, my God. All right, let's, let's get out here. Let's do some wrestling. All right, let's do some wrestling. <laughs> I don't know why I had to get an extreme close-up of his nipple. Hmm, wait a minute. You might have blinked right then. Let's take a, let's take a quick, quick look. As they, uh, exeunt all. Close up of huh. Tater appears. That is one of Matt Walsh's co-workers. Uh, to have a swastika tattooed on his back. His nipple. Uh, let's get you guys over here now. Oh, what's that? Do we have even, yeah, oh uh, yeah, uh, yep, that, that is, yep, that's a swastika, yep. And that is indeed Matt Walsh refereeing whatever you call this. I guess this is the Sweet Baby Gang. And we have uh, Tater. They're going to be wrestling out here in the cold, in the mud, in diapers. And what's on the line? Now, if uh, Tater wins by pin or submission, he wins uh, tickets to go check out Kicks in Easton, um, along with nine other great bands. If, or if uh, Internet wins, if he can somehow take down this giant behemoth, 
Also, just want to say it seems a little unfair to allow this guy to wear shoes and not allow this guy to wear shoes. Seems seems unfair. Yeah. He will get the opportunity just to spray Crank with mace in the face. This is uh, no. This is not happening with the mace. It's, happen. it's a good look. It's 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 something that motivates him. <laughs> so just beat him, and we'll, we'll we'll figure out the mace thing. But just you know, first thing is to beat him. So now, do they have to start in a in a wrestling yeah, position or what? How do you start this? Yeah, how does this work? I think they just go like two gladiators in the arena, <laughs> man to man, <laughs> bear <laughs> to sumo baby to Huey. Sumo? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, no, because that'll uh, that'll require no. ripping at the diaper, and I don't want to see the diaper no, no, come no, off. No, you push, just push. Okay. No, I think I think it's got to be pin or submission. Diaper wrestling, man crank program. On my word, again. Yeah. So this is Matt Walsh unironically refereeing Nazi diaper wrestling. Adult diaper Nazi wrestling. That's where the sweet baby gang comes from, guys. This is super gay. Yeah. It's two adult men wrestling in diapers. Where's the cable? Mr. Rapley, come on. The cable? Go for his knees. Yeah. It goes on for another two minutes, but I, th I think we, I think we've seen enough. I, I, has my point been made? Also, just once again, later in the video, we again see, get a clear visual of the swastika tattoo on his back that everyone has now seen and all seem very okay with. Anyway, that's uh, anyway that's that's the origin story for this particular piece of merch. Uh, Matt Walsh uh, put that out into the world. Felt good putting his name on it. Uh, anyway, uh, you were saying, Matt, you're you're on your high horse about having contributed to society. They don't create anything. Instead, they spend their time dismissively critiquing the only people who are actually doing and creating things. And look, I'm used to having useless people criticize me. It happens every day. But when they do it with such a snide attitude, that's, that's what annoys me. Uh, so here's my challenge as we continue to any of the three dudes in that podcast. Challenge. Go out and create something anything at all that makes a noticeable and positive cultural impact. Now, I don't mean something that your liberal Christian friends like, okay? I mean something that moves the culture in some way, something that people outside of your bubble have to sit up and take note of and grapple with and think about, something that makes a little bit of ripple, has a, has a bit of a ripple effect on the surface of the water. Make anything that achieves that. Could be a song, a movie, a show, even a podcast. Not the one you're currently on. That has zero impact. Nobody watches it. But just anything at all that makes an impact. That's my challenge. And I would suggest that if you can't do that, if you can't even conceive of how to go about doing that, well, then you should probably have a little humility and wipe the smarmy smirks off your faces. Yeah, because this guy has made really, really, really meaningful contributions to the culture, okay? How else would you know what sweet baby uh, gang even means? How dare these smarmy marmy assholes criticize his film? They haven't suffered. 
like he's suffered. They haven't wrestled with the literal embodiment of Nazism. Hmm. Hmm. Because not only that, but you aren't even qualified to hold the positions you currently hold. You should not be in a self-appointed position. Of you know, that's a great point, Harold Elbum in the fourth. Uh, isn't his offering this challenge proof that they already did it? Why, yes, it is. He would not be nearly as mad about this. If, if, if the guy leveling part of this criticism, which has been extraordinarily light, by the way, wasn't the co-creator of Veggie Tales, <laughs> you know? of Christian leadership, or as a supposed Christian thought leader, or whatever, if you actually Thank don't you know how to effectively spread a message of truth and fight back against evil in modern culture. Your, your message of truth was asking if you're racist and not knowing what a woman is. If you don't know how to do that, then all you should be doing... Uh, honestly, right now, right now, Right now, this is my entire, my entire, this is just this. This is the, the response Matt Walsh's self-righteousness uh, deserves right now. Uh, a luxury you can't live without. A luxury I can't live without coffee. I really like good it's coffee. It's not a luxury you can get it anywhere. Uh, I guess, yeah, like good coffee. What's, uh, I love coffee, too. I like nice socks. Socks. Your, your socks, would you put in your shoes? Yeah, I really love them. I like kind of like, you know, cozy feet. You're attracted to your socks. I'm attracted to really nice running socks. Like, I'm always looking for good running you know, socks. Not, that's not a luxury, though. Coffee and socks are not a luxury. All right, give me a luxury. Which, what luxury should I have? Private plane. Larry, I'm on ducktails. Uh, I, I, I always have to play the full thing, but honestly, the, the response in my head is like, Matt, I made Veggie Tales. Like, you, you're, you're so mad. All his, he made a show about singing vegetables, Matt. What do you want? <laughs> what, what do you want? You're the one picking the fight with the guy who makes the singing vegetable show. <laughs> Fellas, is sitting and listening, not talking to an audience. Because you don't have anything worthwhile to say. <laughs> there may, Matt, again, I made a video a while back about how Matt Walsh, like, hates Christianity as a concept and like these guys dedicated their lives to making like fun and approachable uh, reinterpretations of biblical stories ostensibly because they believe that by doing so it will help them save the souls of uh, millions across the, the world, you know, but like, and, and he's like, what have you done? Why are you out there doing the good work opposing evil? It's just like, we, we just make cartoons about singing, singing vegetables, man. Like, why, why are you mad? Why are you mad, though? And you don't have an example that anybody... Is that Abed from Community? Yes, he was also on DuckTales. He ...would benefit from following. But maybe I'm being harsh. So let me now uh, take my own advice and- I mean, half the runtime of this video is you, has been you bitching about the co-creator of VeggieTales not just filleting your film. Continue listening to them so that we can find out if they do in fact have something worthwhile to say. Let's continue. This was the kicker from Matt Walsh because Matt Walsh pushed back and said, and said, I have no regrets about the methods we used and would happily do it again. And then he added, the real dividing line is between those of us who are willing to do what it takes to win the culture war and those of us who are not. Also, keep in mind, so far what they've mentioned that Matt Walsh has reacted to is, is it okay to lie in order for like, like a, like, is it ever okay to lie? Or can you, is it not okay to lie? Or can you lie for a good reason? You know, like that, that's a pretty interesting question, especially in, in like 
Christian religious circles, you know? So he's just upset about them questioning one of the premises of his movie. Oh. Yep. Yep. There and there and there and that is the dividing line. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is exactly the dividing line. That is very true. So you, you agree. You're saying so you're, you're going on record to say you agree with Matt Walsh. In one very narrow respect, you cannot follow the Sermon on the Mount and engage in a culture war. Yes. So there is a dividing line. Absolutely. Um, we, so, so there is this, you know, principle in Judaism about what it is when you, when you save a life, you save the world. And so to deceive in order to protect life, I mean, I'm all for it to deceive in order to own the libs. May it never be Phil. May it never well, and, be. And let's be clear. It's not just deceive to own the libs. It's deceive to own the libs that in a movie that you will make millions of dollars distributing. Mm -hmm. So there. Damn, Matt, they kind of spitting right now. They kind of they kind of pointing out how you you you're not really walking the walk of your uh, religious values, Matt. I I can see why you're so upset. However, I can't help but notice that all of your preemptive anger doesn't seem to really address their point. There is yeah. a self interest in here. There's well, a financial it's, interest. It's in also this. yeah, it's deceiving for entertainment value. Exactly. Because there there are a whole bunch of other ways that you could get make a point that you disagree with diversity, equity, and inclusion programs, right? other than making fun of the people who promote them for money. I think that it's not just about lying and it's not just about this movie, obviously. This, right. is, this is the ethic that animates That's so much right. of the Christian subculture right now. It oh, is, Rondo, it absolutely If you inflate be. their fear that everything is on the line. The world is going to burn. The country is going to be destroyed. The churches are going to be taken over. Your children are going to be, you know, forced out of school to have a sex change operation, whatever. Like these are things yeah. that are being told to people. If everything is on the line, then it justifies abandoning right. the way of Jesus in order to right. do what's necessary mm -hmm. to save yourself here, here. and those you love. Here, here. And, yep. and that's what he's saying is the, every, and it, that's right. It's wrong on so if many you, levels. If you, if you have to set aside the commands of Jesus in order to fulfill what you think is Jesus's agenda, we can be sure it's no longer Jesus you're following. I mean, I wouldn't even, Somniostatic, I have to be honest with you, I don't even know if these are progressive Christians. These are just Christians that reject the, you know, Christ, Christo-fascist framing that is being normalized in the Republican Party, you know? These are just people who actually believe what they say they believe and put their money where their mouth is, you know, like they, they're not out there trying to like, you know, do the whims of billionaires or, or, you know, secretly worshiping the God Emperor Trump, you know, their, their priorities are actually where they say they are, you know? So there's a lot there, um, all of it bad. It is a confused, morally and theologically incoherent stew of nonsense. And it's... Yeah, because Matt Walsh is an expert on... The theology? Remember when earlier in this episode he was talking about... Um, how they didn't have grounds to criticize him because they've never contributed anything in their lives. Two of them used to be pastors, which means they got went through some sort of like theological training, which means they know more about this topic than Matt Walsh does. So Matt Walsh, in response, you know, maybe you should learn something of theology before you try and criticize these people for having inconsistent theology. Coming from exactly the sort of weak, ineffectual, uninspired, utterly useless, limp-wristed, spineless, little mealy-mouthed, empty vessels who have all but destroyed the Christian church in the West. He's so mad. The creator of 
Veggie Tales was just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a fan. I think it's lying for his own self-aggrandizement. And it that that I like that that shot across the bow went into his thermal exhaust port. He's in the process of exploding right now, like a dying star. This is honestly incredible. This this dude is so so incredible. And that's why I get a little heated about this. It's not because I'm defending the movie. The movie doesn't need defense. It's doing great. The audience response has been- The movie doesn't need defense, says man who's been on a tirade about it for the past 10 minutes. Overwhelmingly positive. Certainly not worth getting upset about the opinions of these three guys nobody cares about. And yet, here we are. Here we, here we are. <laughs> what upsets me is that these three guys and the legions of Christian quote unquote leaders just like them have done catastrophic damage to the body of Christ. And yeah, th this is what I'm saying, guys. Like if Matt Walsh and like the MAGA Christo fascist movement ever did get into power, among the people they would purge would be Christian. Like you guys, you guys get that, right? Like, even if he managed to, like, get got rid of, like, all, all of, like, the, the black and brown people. They get rid of all the Muslims. They get rid of all the Jews. They get rid of every single group of people that folks like Matt Walsh look down upon. They would then turn to other Christians and do the same. Because he's part of a death cult. You know, the, the like, he, he's part of, like, this Uroboros that is consuming itself and will eventually, like, be destroyed by its own, I don't know, it, it, its own hubris. Yeah, Matt Walsh is literally sitting there saying that Veggie Tales isn't Christian enough. Like, it it is quite weird. It, it's quite it's quite weird. I, I I don't really have. I I don't really have a have have a have a way to follow that up. I guess I'm, I'm kind of speechless. That damage can best be summarized by the statement from the man on the bottom right of the screen, Pastor Erie. It was a statement enthusiastically co-signed by the other two. And I, I, if I wanted to, to, to sum up all of the problems that, that, that we're having, uh, that, that Western Christendom is having, I, I, I couldn't do it better than what that guy just said. He said, and I quote, you can't follow the Sermon on the Mount and engage in a culture war. Damn, do you, do you feel a little bit called out by that? Do you, do you feel like a, l a little bit called out by that? I don't know. Did, did the guy who create the VeggieTales film, Are You My Neighbor, did, did, did he make you feel like maybe you were a bad guy for being really xenophobic? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Wow. Were you called out by the guy who makes the singing veggies? And his and the, the people he was interviewing? Were you were you called out a little bit? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like this is silly. That very concise. Yes, no, he Amber Brains, he thinks Veggie Tales is too woke. He he's literally sitting there being like, Veggie Tales is uh too leftist. Nicely summarizes the effeminate, castrated form of Christianity that has invaded the Christian church like a parasite. And it could I, I don't know, like one of the guys out there spent his life animating these three-dimensional tomatoes and broccolis into, like, like, 
shepherds. I, I like I, I don't know, man. Like you're you're going really hard on a guy who spent spent his life doing this. Also, yeah, is anyone surprised that the guy who refereed Nazi diaper wrestling is like this? Could not possibly be more wrong. I mean, you might as well say that you can't be a good boxer if you know how to throw a punch. It is a, it is a statement that misses the point so much as to be basically unintelligible. It is a wrongness so wrong that it induces stroke symptoms in those who encounter it. it it's not really, though. What, what he's talking about is the very basic Christian premise that you can't serve two masters at the same time. You know? It, it, like in that passage of the Bible, I believe it was referring to money and God. Um, but in this particular example, he's talking about the fact that like you, you can't you can't serve God and your self, your own self aggrandizement at the same time. No, Pastor. Uh, l l let me clear this up for you. You can't follow the Sermon on the Mount unless you engage in the culture war. Do not light a candle and put it under a bushel. Let your light shine before men. That's what Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, and that is the culture war. It is being a light, a flame, a torch of truth in the darkness. What do you think a culture war is? Let's break this down. I'll try to make it as simple as possible for you guys, because I know that you are not very quick to pick up on things. Uh, culture itself, is nothing less than everything that makes up society. Our institutions, our traditions, our customs, our art, our uh, collective achievements, everything that defines our society, that is the culture. The culture war, therefore. Yeah, but the part you're missing here, Matt, is that he wasn't just referring to culture war. He was referring to your particular role in carrying out the culture war. Your role, your role is you make millions of dollars. You make a lot of money. You're worth $12 million. I'm going to say millions of dollars. Um, you make a lot of money and gain a lot of prestige and a lot of clout, a lot of social power uh, by fighting this culture war. And what he's saying is that he thinks that you are putting God in the back seat and putting uh, your own self in, you know, the passenger seat. You're, you're, you're backseating God, essentially. Or is the fight over that? Nearly every aspect of our society, of our culture, is now controlled and defined by an ideology that not only denies, but aggressively militates against Christian values and Christian teaching. It is an ideology that embraces and promotes debauchery, relativism, self-worship, hedonism, nihilism, an ideology that celebrates the mass slaughter of the unborn, an ideology that seeks to inflame resentment, suspicion, and hostility between different races, which is what our movie deals with. An ideology... I'm sorry. ...of the unborn, an ideology that seeks to inflame resentment, suspicion, and hostility between different races, which is what our movie deals with. Oh, but Matt, I thought racism was done. I, I thought Obama became president. Didn't You, I, you mentioned that. In one of the past videos we covered, you mentioned that Obama became president, and so, uh, you know, so racism was, was done. Uh, hmm, weird. It, it sounds like you're talking about racism operating in systems as well. And I'm pretty sure you've said systemic racism isn't real anymore. So which is it? Is systemic racism real? or not. An ideology that, that instills uh, deep uh, confusion in children so they don't even understand uh, who they are, what they are. An ideology that, yes, castrates and sterilizes children, which is what our last movie dealt with. Now, we want to stop that. We want to defeat that ideology and install Christian values in its place. The other option is to surrender. So tell me, Pastor, which part of the Sermon on the Mount calls for us to surrender to evil? 
Where did you see that? Can you quote me a chapter and verse on that one? What's the part that tells us that we're too good? We need to be too good and too uh, sophisticated to worry about evil. Little things like that. You know. Uh, Matt, I think there was something along the lines of uh, look to look to the the plank in your own eye. Something along those lines. You know. Uh, so something, something, piece of dot, sawdust in uh, your 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 neighbor's eye, plank in your own. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an expert or anything. You know what I see when I read the scriptures are continued, relentless calls to fight evil, not lie down and acquiesce to it. Yeah, that's why, as Jesus said. You don't turn the other cheek. You turn a mean right hook. But you know all of that, don't you? See, people like you pretend to be too good for the culture war. You stick up your nose and act like you're above it all. I, you know, I, I would love for Matt Walsh to cite his uh, religious stance. You know, where, where's, what, what verses are he, is, is he getting this from? You know? Interestingly enough, he's like, I want you to cite a verse for me, but like he doesn't give any citations for his own. You know, that, that's very interesting, especially considering he's so much more uh, theologically learned than these uh, people who preach for a living. <laughs> he's so mad. He's so mad at the guy that made the singing vegetables. Oh. But in reality, you are yourself actively fighting a culture war. You're fighting one right now. All three of you in that video were fighting a culture war in the video itself. It's just that you're fighting on the other side. Trying to convince us not to fight is a battle tactic that you are employing. You are employing it on- You're traitors! Traitors to the faith! P prep the Iron Maiden! They will be drawn and quartered should they survive. On behalf of the he, He's literally like this level of mad because he considers them heretical against his like Trump religion. You know, like that literally. They aren't marching in lockstep with his idea of what it means to be a good Christian and his idea of what it means to be a good Christian is voting for Donald Trump, being a fascist. Anyone who contradicts that, well, they're heretics and must, and must, and must be purged. ...side that despises Christian values, Christian teaching, and the truth of the God. This is, this is over Veggie Tales. Yeah, the guy in the clips that he was playing earlier who was asking questions... He, he has a podcast, and the guy is the co-creator of VeggieTales, and he was just interviewing two pastors, and the, the topic of uh, Matt Walsh's film came up. And Matt Walsh is just really, really, really upset. Gospel. And sadly, this tactic has been very effective up to this point. But I think that's starting to change now, finally because we see you people for what you really are and what you're really doing and who you're really aligned with. And that is why you are all today very much with a vengeance. Cancel. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to- Wow, uh, man, did, you know, it must be really terrible to, I don't, I don't know, be those guys. All, all canceled and sad and such. Let's see. What, what is this show about anyway? <laughs> Guys, he canceled VeggieTales. Talk to tomato. Oh man, guys.
I don't think the VeggieTales guys will ever recover. If a squash can make you smile, if you it's like cute. To waltz with it's the cute. What can I say? And down the produce aisle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Have we got a show for you? It it's it's cute. It, it's 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 a cute show about happy singing vegetables that learn god's lessons okay you know as far as as far as media along these lines go it's it's actively unoffensive and fine inoffensive and fine you know like it's cute Yeah, you know, like just like weird little reinterpretations of of like Bible stories. Oh man. That's it. You've lost us the culture war with your vegetables. It should have been about meat. <laughs> It's cute. Anyway, that's that's the show that Matt Walsh wants to pick a fight with, and I I just find that incredibly, incredibly funny. Uh, on the one hand, you've got the Nazi diaper wrestler himself, uh, Matt Walsh, and a butt aside.